Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger of Virginia will face a tough battle for re-election this November. She represents a moderate district in a swing state, and Republicans see it as a potential pickup as they try to retake the House. Several GOP candidates are competing for the nomination to run against her in the 7th Congressional District. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News political producer Aaron Navarro. Aaron, I want to play some sound from your conversation with Congresswoman Spanberger for our audience. Many voters want to make sure that I, as their representative, know that the cost of gas is impacting their lives. If their long commutes, the expense that it takes to get their kids to and from school. Um, and, and the next step is, okay, well, so let's talk about, you know, solutions. Um, and, and sure, there are some voters who want to put the blame, uh, you know, squarely on the shoulders of certain individuals. Uh, and there are many voters who recognize that the instability caused by Russia invading Ukraine uh, has really been a major disruption within energy markets, not to mention particularly at a time when we're still um, moving out of uh, a two-year global pandemic. Cost of gas and the domino effect that that has, how does she see some of these issues impacting her re-election campaign and her chances at success? Hi, Lana. Thanks for having me. She sees it as a chance to, to not only acknowledge that there are problems her constituents are facing, but also talk and, and revert a bit to the Democratic accomplishments that they've had this past year, starting with COVID and the PPP money they've gotten and relief, and going to the infrastructure bill and their effort to address the, the child tax credit. So thinking ways to counter uh, the negative impact of inflation with other Democratic policies that could help lower costs uh, that families and, and people are facing. Well, you also got a chance to chat with Yesli Vega, one of Spanberger's Republican challengers. Let's hear what she had to say. The voters are not buying that this is an issue that's been caused by Ukraine. Look, again, Joe Biden closed the Keystone Pipeline, all right, which already increased prices for consumers. We need to get back to a point where we are energy independent because it's better for the consumers, but also it cuts off Russia. Uh, this president uh, did away with President Trump's sanction, which has only enriched Putin. Aaron, how are Republicans using the higher gas prices to campaign against Democrats? And how are voters in the 7th District responding? Republicans already saw a, a, an issue to talk about the economy with inflation, which has been pretty steadily an issue for them since the last summer. They believe it's going to be an issue going into November. So what the rise in gas prices does is it gives them another way to contrast themselves uh, with Democrats when it comes to matters of the economy. But when I talked to voters here, I got a mixed reaction. When I asked, who do you blame for the rise in gas prices, some people said they don't blame anyone. Some said they do blame President Biden. Some said they're okay with the rise in gas prices if that means it helps uh, the current um, Ukraine Ukrainians right now facing an invasion from Russia. So uh, this is a swing district. You're going to get a mix of responses right now. But as of the moment, they're still dealing with the high gas prices. It just started a couple weeks for them. They're continuing to monitor it. But uh, they're going to make sure to continue to uh, talk about that and, and, and stuff with their voters. Aaron, appreciate that debrief and have actually really enjoyed seeing those cute little faces that are running behind you. Thanks. Thanks, Lana.